Yo, what's going on guys? This is me, Asin, and welcome to my Galaxy Eyes deck profile. So, I don't have much to say before we start. This deck was interesting to build because I had to make sure I wouldn't, like, denaturalize the deck by making, like, by adding, like, unnecessary random trash. Like, I don't know, like, I really didn't want this deck to become another one of those Needle Fiber or Guard Dragon decks, so I just wanted to keep it, like, as pure and clean as I possibly could. But I feel like the way it is right now, it's relatively appealing. You know, I... I wouldn't honestly play this at a regionals because maybe like it sure it is relatively consistent like it doesn't break too much but it just lacks a little bit of meat like it doesn't have enough juice and even though it has some amazing really cool combos it's it's a deck that I would label as a tier 2.5 ish decks uh, deck so it's cool but it's it's up to you if you want to play it or not. I think it's alright, but whatever. So, first of all, as you can see in the main deck, I'm playing three Galaxy Eyes after Glow Dragon. So, this is kind of like a new card. It's not really out yet, I, I believe, because right now it's labeled as OCG. Honestly, I don't really remember the, 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 the actual set of this card. But it has a really cool effect. So, basically, if you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, you are allowed to special summon it from your hand. And when it is detached to activate the effect of an Xyz monster, you get to take one Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon from your deck and either attach it to an Xyz monster you control or special summon it. So it's, it has really cool synergy. If you've already seen my uh, my combo video, it has really cool synergy with uh, this guy, the Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon, because during the battle phase, actually, Afterglow has a bonus effect, which it doubles the uh, doubles the attack of every Xyz monster, uh, every number monster, sorry, you control. So... It's really big. Uh, if you detach a material during the battle phase, and Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon actually triggers during the damage calculation. So another thing is that you you can actually play around Ash that way. So you can technically deal 11,000... 11,200 or something like that. It's just like such a stupid number. It's like... I think it's 56 multiplied by 2. So yeah, exactly. It should be 11,200 11, damage if my maths are not too garbage. It's like basically Gr Grandmaju 2.0. And it's just one battle. So if your opponent has a monster with... Um, a 3,200... So yeah, if your monster... If your opponent has a monster with 3,200 attack or less, it's the one punch OTK. So... It's, a, it's amazing. I, I like it a lot, and it's just a two-card OTK. Basically, as long as you can have a rank 8 uh, summon with an afterglow on the field, you, you already have it. So Nebula Dragon was another really cool discovery that I found for this deck. It was a really nice way to fix like the, the weird hands and also allow Traden to become significantly better. Because Traden is, is amazing when you're playing a, level, a lot of level 8s. And when they're uh, when they're uh, searchable, and also when you want them in the graveyard, and I feel like uh, is this yeah photon vanisher. This card is really nice because it searches your galaxy eyes photon dragon from your deck to your hand, which you don't really need technically in the hand. It's good to have in the grave because galaxy knight can revive it back from the grave, which is like a one card rank eight, and you you shouldn't need your um, your normal summon too much. So galaxy knight, you know the fact that it's searchable, it deserves just its play spot as a one of. But, yeah, I also, I'm not playing Pot of Desires. I, I don't know, like, I'm playing so many 3-ofs, technically, and 2-ofs and stuff like that. You could play Pot of Desires, honestly. It's definitely a great option. That's why it's in my idea category with Galaxy Cyclones. It's insearchable, and also, you know, it has Galaxy in its name, so... It fits the theme of the deck, which is very nice. But, uh, oh, anyways, let's uh, continue, by the way, the deck profile. So, 3 Photon Dragon, I don't want to explain this. It is definitely the heart and soul of the deck. Uh, this card is actually very good to always have access in your hand and deck, because you can easily search it and special summon it from the deck, and sometimes not from the hand. So, during your opponent's turn, for example, if you detach, for example, like... Okay. If you detach, for example, like uh, Afterglow as a material, you can actually special summon uh, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon right from your deck, and then you can use uh, this guy, Sa Star Leech Photon Blast Dragon, to revive back a Galaxy Eyes Photon that is in your graveyard or banished. So very good uh, uh, recurrence. But the name Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon is very important because it is, if I recall correctly, the only main deck monster in the entire game that has both Galaxy and Photon both in their name remember that because being a photon monster is very strong in a galaxy eyes photon deck this is not just a galaxy deck it's also a photon uh, deck as well because the photons they kind of like work independently but to help you get to your uh your galaxy eyes photon dragon without necessarily granting you access to i want to say galaxy soldier and stuff like that but actually that's kind of a lie because photon orbital 
it does allow you to search a galaxy monster as well. So honestly, I was just thinking about v uh, Vanisher. And also, Galaxy Wizard cannot search a Photon card, so I guess th that's why I was kind of, like, uh, confused. But remember that I only had, like, one one or two days of experimenting with this deck, really not that much. I really tried doing my best with what I had, so once again, if you actually have any uh, comments or any feedback, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, even if it's, like, something that you don't like, I really need to know because uh, we can actually have a really nice conversation and uh, pretty much help us uh, improve on, a like, a better deck, which is beneficial for both of us. So, yeah, anyways, as you can see, I'm also playing Upstart, which is very obvious. The three Nebula Dragon is just amazing when you're playing so many level 8s. I already explained that. Three Galaxy Soldier, once again, it's... I want to say, unlike in Cyber Dragons, this is, like, the kind of card that you really, really, really really want to see because it searches more cards than just galaxy soldier so yeah of course you can search another galaxy soldier and then you know discard something else and then make nova infinity whatever everybody knows that but you can also search very powerful cards like galaxy knight and then make your one card rank eight potentially make a drag lubion uh that, that wasn't drag lubion i am blind okay that is drag lubion um and then you can actually OTK, by the way. Draglubion is a one-card OTK on its own because you can summon Numeron Dragon with, like, 9,000 attack and just kill your opponent. So, yeah, Numeron Dragon is definitely a very good card to consider as well. It just depends on what you want to play. I play Dweller because I'm playing so many level 4s. But, you know, if you, if you don't want to, that's completely understandable as well. So, yeah. Moving on. Uh, 3 Thrasher. I really want to be able to summon multiple monsters on the field. It's just, it's really important, because Photon Vanisher, the thing is, you can only summon it if you control a Photon... I, I, I forgot if it was a Photon or a Galaxy Monster, but yeah, no, it, it does have, like, a restriction, like a summoning condition. So, if you can actually get that special summon for free, it's, you know, all the better. And also, it allows you to make rank 4s, which is also very interesting. This deck, uh, just, it, like, if you, if you don't build it, like, rank 4 and rank 8 centric, you just can't really do too much. So that's why, and also I really didn't want to play the Dangerous because there are a lot of cards that lock you on Light Summons only, for example, Photon Sanctuary, or on, uh, well, Light Dragons, for example, or Light and Dark Dragons, sorry, for, like, Nebula. But, like, Nebula is actually until the rest of the turn, whereas Photon Sanctuary is, like, the turn you activate this card, if I recall correctly. Uh, but, like, whatever, it's not really relevant. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah, no, no, Galaxy Trance is the big one. It locks you on Galaxy and Photon Monsters the turn you activate this, so... You can't make Nova and Infinity, you can't make Dweller, you can't make Draglubion, you can't make Felgrand. Uh, it's big. But Galaxy Trance is like the best one card comeback when you're like, when you're not doing well. It's a one card just OTK. Because it revives back Galaxy as Photon Dragon from your grave. And then it summons the Afterglow Dragon from your deck. And then you make Prime Photon. And then during the battle phase you, you attack, you detach Ga Afterglow. And then basically what happens is that you can summon Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon from your deck and attack. So your Prime Photon becomes 11,200 attack because you detached Afterglow during the damage step. Uh, the, 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 the damage calculation, I think. And also Afterglow just doubles the attack of that monster after you, you apply the effect of Prime Photon. And you have Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon on the field. So pretty much one single card that is searchable, by the way, can become 11,000... No, 14,200 damage. Jeez, that's a lot. My maths become really, really, like, crappy as soon as I, I go, like, on numbers that are, like, over, like, 5. Like, I can count to 5, no problem, don't worry. But, like, 6, 7, 9, 11, and 14, like, I kind of forget the or the order after that, you know? it's It, it becomes hard, so give me a break, all right? But, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much, uh, it, like, that, that's pretty much it. And I, I don't think anything else deserves, like, an explanation. I mean, Photon Orbital, sure, a 3 of because it's a consistency card. Uh, Reinforcement of the army gives you an option, um, option, so either Photon Vanisher or Thrasher, depending on which one you have, and then you can make a, a rank 4. So, for example, Star, Star Leech to summon Galaxy's Photon from your hand, or have that recursion in the grave, or that protection. It has a passive effect, very cool. Uh, one really interesting thing, I guess, is Galaxy Wizard. So, honestly, I'm not a big fan of playing 3. I don't think it should be a 3 of at all. I, I don't think this is correct. Because we're already playing Galaxy Knight, which is the superior normal summon. But the thing with Galaxy Wizard is that it kind of just unbreaks your hand in a way. Because sometimes you just... You're one card short from doing your combo, and you don't always need Galaxy Knight. Sometimes it's just... It's just better to be safer and make, like less less bigger boards 
than just be greedy and just decrease consistency just to increase power. So that's... Okay, again. But yeah, that's pretty much the reason why I wanted to play 3 Galaxy Wizard. But once again, if I had more time to deck build and test, I probably wouldn't be playing 3. Probably be playing 1 or 2. Yeah, but then once again, I really don't want to be like splashing random cards in this deck, you know? So yeah, that's, that's the reason why I'm, I kind of rushed it. Galaxy Brave... This card is not good enough. Like, it's only good when you can s reveal, like, Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon from your hand, special summon it, and it's basically like a level 8 vanilla special summon. Uh, it's a situational summon. It's not too great. No, no, I don't like Galaxy Brave. Once again, like, Galaxy Brave and probably two copies of Galaxy Wizard should go away, but then you're losing out on consistency, so you're always a loser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's extremely sad and pathetic. But I guess it does m give a little bit more credit to trade in. And also one really important thing is that Galaxy Wizard doesn't ha just have that tribute effect to um, to search a monster. Like, uh, sorry, a Galaxy card. That's relevant, by the way. Galaxy card, not Galaxy monster. Your Galaxy spells are amazing. Expedition and Trance are fantastic. But also Galaxy Wizard can become level 8 on the field. So sometimes you already have one level 8 access. All you need is one final level 8. And then boom, that's already your rank 8. And rank 8 just... Honestly, in 2020, it trans translates to OTK. If, if you can make a rank 8, you, you're gold, you win the game. So that's pretty much what you can try to do. Uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for most of the deck profile. Uh, called by the Grave is meh. It's, once again, another the card that I just wanted to fit in because I didn't want to start randomly losing to hand shops. Imagine if your Galaxy Wizard gets ashed. It's like, it's the end of the world because it tributes itself for cost. So you lose board presence, and it's just it's just bait, honestly. It's like the end of the world. If, like, Photon Vanisher gets ashed, I don't care, because the monster stays, stays on the field. So, you know, it's like, I don't care. I just lose on a Photon Dragon anyways. Like, what? I don't care. But Galaxy Wizard, I lose my normal summon. I lose a body. It's 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 bad. Anyways, for the extra deck, so I play Galaxy Ice Cypher Blade Dragon. Self-explanatory. Uh, full Armor Photon. This this card is really, really good, by the way. So pretty much, this, this is the, pa the package. So you can destroy two cards when you overlay them on top of Galaxy Cypher or Prime Photon, and uh, yeah, no, you you just you just kill a lot of cards. It's uh, pretty disgusting. And Cypher Dragon also being able to steal a monster. If you can steal an Xyz, you can overlay like uh, Cypher Blade. I think it's Cypher Blade or Full Armor Photon on one on one of them, and that's like it, it, it's kind of like if you stole it permanently, which is cute. And also, it just deals so much damage because they have very high attack and they gain attack as well. And once again, with Afterglow, you can double the attack of some of them, the number monsters. So. Yeah, Harbinger, of course, that's the fact that it has the word Galaxy in its name is also very relevant. So it's actually unaffected by the lock of Galaxy Trance. You can still summon Harbinger under Galaxy Trance because it doesn't say Galaxy Eyes, it says Galaxy. Galaxy and Photon. So, yeah. And then Draglubion, of course, you know, it's a dark dragon. So once again, if you're under Nebula, you can still make this. You can make Numeron Dragon because everything is light and, dar uh, light and dark dragon. Divine Dragonite Felgrand is a warrior, unfortunately. So it's like the kind of card that you do, that you summon when you're like, when you're doing well and, you know, you don't really have to care about uh, any locks. Galaxy Ice Photon Lord. This card is so amazing that in theory, you could play multiples. But I, I, I don't think the game should drag on that long. Like, if you have difficulties, like, closing out a game, maybe you should, like, look into your playstyle or something. Maybe you're doing something wrong, because I feel like this deck can kill very fast and very easily. So, Galaxy Ice Photon Lord as a one-of is enough, and this card, uh, it gets you very far. Like, it gets you searches during your opponent's turn, it negates monster effects, and on top of negating, it also destroys if you have Photon Dragon underneath. So, no, it's a, it's a really big card, honestly. Star Leech, Photon, I already explained. Dweller, whatever, I just needed rank 4. Uh, Nova Infinity, of course, because you can also sometimes search a second soldier with the first when you already have your Galaxy Knight. So, it makes Infinity with a rank 8. Union Carrier, very cute because it can actually equip Photon Orbital. So, sometimes you can just turn any two light monsters into, like, a Galaxy Starter, which is cute. Because, once again, you're not always going to have all your combo pieces, so yeah. And then, two Soul Flare Dragon, which uh, has two very relevant effects that you should always already know of. And if you don't, make sure you actually watch the combo video back, because that's going to come up for sure. And then, for the suggestion cards, multiple copies of Galaxy Knight, if you want to. You know, it's up to you. Uh, same with Brave, but like, no. <laughs> Honestly, no. Galaxy Cleric is an interesting, like, Pot of Avarice-esque card, but it does take up your normal summon, and it does absolutely nothing early on, and my philosophy is that you shouldn't bother too much with cards that 
can't be used turn one in a deck that already has issues getting started. So Galaxy's Cleric, I wouldn't play it whatsoever. I would not not play it. It's just an idea if you want to. And if you find a way that is the, to break this deck even more than I did, because I realistically don't think I did a great job. Like I said, this deck is very hard to build because if you don't want to denaturalize it, it's it's just, you know, it, it has very limited options. It's consistently like under locks and stuff like that. So, yeah, but whatever. And then, whatever, if you want to play hand traps, you can do that as well. Baguska, another rank uh, rank 4. Numeron Dragon is amazing with Draglubion. I don't even know why I have Boral Sword. Unicorn Mascarena, I mean, once again, you're usually under lock, so... Yeah, it doesn't come up too often. And that's pretty much all I had to say, honestly. So, once again, if you have any feedback or comments, make sure you let me know. And also, once again, make sure you subscribe because more really cool videos are coming up very soon. And once again, I take into consideration your guys' comments. So yeah, that is pretty much all I had to say. Thank you very much for watching. And till then, it is Yasin signing out. Peace!